Hi guys. This happens every summer. This is the second bumblebee in two days that I've found just crawling around on the grass looking quite listless. So I got sugar and water and put it in a Where's it going? I put it in a milk bottle cap and try to encourage the bee. I don't know how well you can see this. Try to encourage it. You look, you can see its little proboscis. Try to encourage it um, on there. Or even on the table here with I've got sugary water <laughs> everywhere. But it didn't want to come off my hand. Kept um just walking all over my hand and, and I thought okay it prefers to eat off my hand, fair enough. So I proceeded to drip <clears throat> drip water and sugar on my hand and at first oh, it didn't seem to notice what I was trying to do and it was just you know crawling away from me and investigating my hand but now it's suddenly realized aha and it is taking the sugared water now is this better light probably not it's 10 p.m here now so it's getting a bit darker and I really don't know if, if this is very well focused. Is that better? Mmm, okay that might be better. Aha! Oh it's lovely. Do you know I just thought it wasn't even going to take it. Um, it definitely is. And um, The bee I had yesterday, it, it just wouldn't, it, it was getting, and I thought, you know what, I could be stressing this little creature out because it might think I'm just trying to chase it. Um, and I just left it, but I put it under a, a piece of bark, a piece of wood in the garden, and I left the sugary water there, so hopefully it found it of its own accord. Um, but as I say, this little one just would not come off my hand. And then it was trying to lick my hand and I realised, you know, if it's getting anything off my hand it'll be salt, we don't want that. Um, but finally it's taken sugared water. And yes, I do know there's a correct ratio of sugar to water. And very possibly I don't have the ratio right because I was just dripping the water and the sugar on straight onto my hand. Um, but I shall still think it's better than nothing. It's really getting quite dark here now, isn't it? Um, but I know once I put it on YouTube, I can actually enhance the lighting a little bit. You see, to me that doesn't look like much water at all, but um, I don't know, perhaps it was the sugar it wanted. I literally had little rivulets of water dripping all down my hand, but it would just walk through it. Um, trying to find a lighter area. It would just walk through. Uh, is that any better? So, last year I did this and um, filmed it and some people wrote interesting comments that was really that really made my day it was good to know people liked it and other people had tried the same and as I say this is the second in two days and you know often it's Lily our cat who finds them um, she doesn't kill them, she just stares at them, sometimes gives them a little pat, but of course that alerts me to the fact 
they're, uh, they're there and they need help. And no doubt I could fix the focus on this camcorder and get it more focused for you, but because I'm actually <laughs> using one hand at the moment, I can't really do that. And maybe even if I have a different background, the, the focusing will help. Ah, yeah, that might be good, a nice blue contrast there. I do enjoy doing this. You know, I saw a really fascinating um, YouTube video just recently. So, where are we now? The very end of June, the start of July. And a friend, Gail, thank you Gail, posted it on Facebook. Now, I think I may have saw it a year or two before because it was familiar. And... Have we got another backdrop for you? No, this is probably the best one. It's picking up some light at least. Yeah, it um, it was about a woman who, you know, like this, found out a bee and it had no wings. So she thought well, maybe it was born that way, you know, maybe all the pesticides and problems that are happening these days. Who knows? But anyhow, so she did this, I think, if I remember correctly, and realised that the bee was so happy on her hand um, that she, she actually took it indoors and she fed it. Uh, I don't know what she fed it, sugared water or honey or whatever. And the little thing actually seemed to enjoy being on her hand because it would keep, um, obviously couldn't fly, but it would keep choosing to be on her hand and, and walk about her hand and all that instead of just uh, walking onto the table or whatever. So she kept it. Now I think that's better light in there, is it? Should be in a bit of the garden now. Oh yeah, that looks better. Oh. So she kept this bee and now I don't know how long it lived. Um, but you know, it certainly lived in her house. She kept it until it it died um, of a good old age or natural causes or whatever. Um, and she said that the little thing, she knew it was going and it died in her hand. And it really seemed as if it had... Um, oh, that's a nice contrast. It did seem... Oh, there he's on the move. Right, guys, I better go because it maybe wants more water and I can't do it like this. Are you on the move? Oh, where are you? There you are. Yeah, I better go. Might want more water or we might just be feeling a bit better. Normally when they feel a bit better they start running or literally um, fly off. Still here. Still taking the sugared water. It is a little tricky because when you're dripping the sugar and the water on, on yourself, sometimes it drips down on, you know, onto the bee's little feet, whatever you call them. <laughs> and then it turns and walks away a little bit. Um, How's that for the light? Yeah, as you can see, we're still doing the garden up. And a beautiful old tree in the garden. It's just gorgeous, I love it. But, um, are you on the move again? You're not finding anything around that way. Oh! <laughs> That's tickly. Oh, 
<laughs> oh no, Lily's here. She knows what I'm doing, don't you, Lily? I've got your friend and he's just about... Oh gosh, it's going to go up my sleeve. <laughs> it went up my sleeve. That was really tickly. Um, I didn't care if it stung me, but I didn't want it to get stuck or whatever. Looks a bit better now, so walking a bit faster. Right, I think I should go and put it on a nice flower. I think maybe it's had enough. I don't know. Probably felt it's had a bit of a surreal experience anyway, that's for sure. Sugars and waters everywhere. Thank you, Lily, for telling me about your little bee. Mm-hmm. You're a good girl, aren't you? Hey? She stays on her lead in the garden so she won't escape and so no one steals you because you're so beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, let's find a nice flower. I think if I was a bee I might like a nice yellow flower. Too dark. Okay. It's going under the leaf. So that's a good sign. And um, I saw a mouse earlier going over to the bird seed area. Other than that, um, we don't seem to have many hedgehogs here. And we have birds, obviously. Squ squirrels? No. We did years ago, but then, I don't know, we only had one and then it must have died. But it used to come and sit and actually look at me through the window, stare at me, and it was quite cheeky. I thought that was funny. Didn't it, Lily? And you didn't know what to think of it. And it fed itself from the, the, bird, the bird seed as well. Didn't it? What else do we have? Foxies. Sometimes see them at night. They've been through the garden. I think they do use it to cut through um, to go in their way. So as you can see we're lifting up all this gravel that looks like the kind of gravel, gravel I remember, the stones I remember from the 70s. Um, 70s and 80s when I was really young. So and we've had it for, what, five years since we moved in here, but it's time to go. It's not the nicest thing to walk on. N not nice for you either, is it, Lily? On your little paws. So, that's it, the adventures of the bumblebee. And let's end on a nice rose. And, you know, I never used to really like the colour orange much. I always preferred purples, but these were here, obviously, when we came here. And now I just really like it. So, maybe we'll see another bee tomorrow. So thanks guys for tuning in. Something a little bit different for you today. And I hope you enjoyed it. So it's now 10 to 11 here in Bonnie, Scotland. And as you can see, <coughs> it's still light. Excuse the towels on the line. Very quiet here, this area. We're not that far from Glasgow. And it's such a quiet little place. I don't know if you can hear that music or not. Um, at the end of our street, really just four houses along, there is a Masonic Hall, Freemasons Hall, and They've started to rent it out to groups of people that want to use it. So there's guys in there having band practice. It's not too loud, um, but I thought that was interesting. They're renting it out now. Yeah, we didn't know that when we moved in. I don't know if you can see these. We got these new lights, the butterfly lights. They're quite cute. Um, so no doubt people will write and ask, where did you get them? 
where we got them in B and M, a store you might know if you're in the UK. And um, oh, quite reasonably priced. And of course, they're meant to last forever. I like these little lights actually, these little glass lights. I like the the, the crackle effect, you know, that reflects the light. Pretty. So, very, very quiet area, and obviously, everyone's indoors now. I don't know why people still don't sit out. Um, in, in Scotland, you know, when you have light, you just want as much of it as you can. And as I say, even at 10 o'clock you could still sit out. And the little purple lights, I like them. <coughs> the nice glass ones again. I've never did this actually, come out at night and filmed all the little lights. Something nice to keep. If we move, and I love these roses, the, the, the roses in our garden, the, the heads are so huge. Um, I say we're very fortunate when we came here, it already had the, the beautiful tree and all the rose bushes, I love that tree. Well, there's not really much else to show you, that's about it. Yeah, we're going to have to fix this, the, the tree's so old and the roots have been pushing up the slabs as you can see here, so we're going to deal with that. As I said earlier, it's really, it's got a very 70s feel about it because I don't think it's been renovated since then. Those of you from Scotland will probably recognise these stones that you would see a lot in the 70s in gardens. It's probably too dark for you to even see this now actually. I quite like them and you know they do attract moss to grow but I like moss and um, they say it's good for absorbing pollution. Don't know how true that is. Yeah I saw that in Gardener's World actually the other night. They were saying a, a small, very small patch of moss in your garden can actually absorb um, pollution up to what it would normally take, like 150 trees to absorb, something like that. So if people tell you moss is just a weed, you can say I don't care, it's absorbing pollution. <laughs> this is the tree we hang all the bird feeders from. No idea if you can see this. And at 10 to 11, as I say, in Scotland we still have the light. <coughs> and that's it, and I guess the little bees scurried away somewhere. Well, let's see what tomorrow brings. And that's the cat pod, we call it the cat pod. It's great because Woozle sits in it, he's a sphinx, he's bald and therefore if there's any gust of wind he really doesn't like it so he sits in there and he can stay out for hours. Hmm. Well that's it. Something a little different for this evening. Thank you for watching and speak to you again soon.